In this video, we're going to solve simultaneous linear equations using matrices. And the method we're going to use is the augmented matrix and perform elementary row operations on them. And it sounds a lot worse than what it is. It's easy, really. So uh, let's have a look. So say you're given a set of equations, like uh, simultaneous equations, that they're all true, also known as a, a system of equations. So here we've got the first equation says two lots of x plus two lots of y plus three lots of z equals 26. The second equation, which is also true, says four lots of x uh, minus one lot of y plus two lots of z equals 11. And the last equation says three lots of x plus three lots of y plus one lot of z equals 25. Now this could be, for instance, if you've got x is like the price of a drink, y is the price of a packet of crisps and z is the price of a packet of peanuts or something like that we can work out uh, what each of them costs by doing um, simultaneous equations by solving them and we're going to use matrices the first thing we'll do is write all of these uh, coefficients as in the things that multiply x y and z we'll write them into a little matrix so it's going to be two lots of x, two lots of y, and three lots of z for the first equation. Second equation is four lots of x. Uh, take away one lot of y, so that's going to be minus one, and then plus two z. And then we're going to use three lots of x plus three lots of y, so that'll be another plus three plus one lot of z, so it's going to be a one. But so far, we've only really shown the coefficients. We haven't shown x, y, and z. So if you know how to multiply matrices, you need to know how to multiply matrices in order to understand this video. So if you don't know how, look at the other videos that I've made on multiplying matrices. So here we'll have the uh, the variable, if it, the unknown x, here we'll have the unknown y, here we'll have the unknown z. So the way that these would multiply out, you know, you do the top row by the column, then the second row by the column, and then the third row by the column, so that would be 2x plus 2y plus 3z. Uh, and that's what we had here, so we know this works. All we have to do is equals, and then we do another matrix with, if you like, the uh, the numbers that you get when you multiply and add all these together. So that'll be 26, 11, and 25. So we need to work out, like we know what this first matrix, we could call it matrix A. We know what all the values of that are. We're multiplying it by something, another matrix, and it gives us all of these values in what we call matrix B. So we'd call this what's here, you know, matrix X. We could call it anything, but X is like the unknown, so we don't know what value this little X, this Y, and this Z have. So this matrix represents an unknown uh, three sort of variables, if you like. So we need to work out what these are, because we already know those, and we know what the values in B are. The way to carry on from here, um, we need to augment matrix A and put the values of matrix B in with them. And I'll, I'll write that down. This, it sounds a lot harder than what it is. So we've got 2, 2, 3, and then we put the answer, if you like, the 26 in there. And for the second row, we've got 4, minus 1, 2, and the answer, if you like, is 11. Then the third row gives us 3, 3, 1, and 25. Put the bracket there. You can do some dotted lines or just a straight line, or you don't really need to put anything. But it just shows that this is matrix B, which has been kind of glued onto matrix A augmenting it or making it a bit longer so this is why it's called an augmented 
matrix which would be written as like a augmented would be if case you wanted to know what we really want to get we want to get just one number on its own in one of the rows and the rest are zeros then we want to get two numbers in another row with a zero and then we want to get three numbers in a third row it doesn't actually matter which rows uh, have which numbers although there is a sort of standard way of doing it and I'll do it that way but what we want is really we want two zeros here and a number here so that we can work out what one lot of z is and then when we know what one lot of z is if we have two numbers here and a zero there that'll be one lot of y plus two lots of z equals another number and if we know what z is it's going to be easy to find out what y is and then when we know what y and z are we can multiply two lots of x plus two lots of y plus three lots of z at 26 and if we already know what y and z are that makes it easy to find x i put the augmented matrix here and what we're going to do is call like row operations so the rules are that you can multiply any row by a number or you can swap entire rows you know you could make put the first row down the bottom if you wanted to or you could um multiply any row by a number and add it to either itself or add it to another row so they're like the three operations you can move rows around as long as you treat them as a whole row you have to move this part as well if you move this part uh, you can multiply rows by a number or, or you can multiply them by themselves and if you need to look up elementary row operations they're very simple but they'll become apparent when we do this example and what we really want is sort of good practice although it's not completely necessary we want a one in the first row we don't care about the other numbers and then really we want two numbers in this row we want a zero there and two other numbers and then really what we want here is two zeros and then another number n is just meaning any number here and the reason like what I said a, a minute ago then we can do we can multiply easier to find z and then we can multiply two numbers by y and z and then we can multiply three numbers by x y and z to solve our equations uh, if this wasn't a zero and if this wasn't a zero it would be very difficult if not impossible to work out what the values of x y and z were so always try and get a zero here and two zeros here so you've got one number and then two numbers then three numbers and although it's not strictly necessary they say to make the first row make it start with a one so with that in mind this is row one this is row two and this is row three if we want to make row one start with the number one by multiplying what we need to do is half everything and because these equations hold true like 2x plus 2y plus 3z is 26 it stands to reason that if you have everything the equation hasn't really changed you've divided both sides by 2 if you like so what we're going to do is divide row 1 by 2 and put it back in row 1 and how we show we're doing that we put row 1 say what you're doing to it dividing it by 2 and then we're going to put it in row 1 again so that's what this means we're going to take row 1 divide it by 2 and put it back where row 1 was so that we're starting with a 1 so divide everything by 2 that'll become 1 1 and we could write 1.5 but it's better really to write 3 over 2 and then 26 over 2 is 13 so we've done that so far so that we've got what we wanted we've got a one at the start of the row because we've divided everything in the row by two we haven't changed the equation that now says one x plus one y plus three over two z equals 13 which is exactly the same as what this says it's like an equivalent if you like 
So that's the operation we did to row one. If we want to get a zero at the start of row two, like here, so that we have only two numbers that aren't zero to multiply by y and z, what can we do to the number four by multiplication and then addition to make it zero? Well, we need to somehow add minus four to it because four plus minus four is zero, which is what we want at the start of this row. But where do we get that minus four from? But remember this row now has been changed. So that row, row one is now here. This is row one now. So what we could do, because in row one, we've got a one and we're after minus four, we could multiply row one by minus four and add it to the existing row two. And what that would give us is minus four times one is minus four. And if we add it to four, we would get the zero that we're after. So the next row operation we're gonna do is minus four, lots of the existing R1. We're gonna add that to R2, row two, and we're gonna put it in row two. So all this says, take take row one, multiply it by minus four, and add it to the existing row two, and then like overwrite it, you know, put it in as the new uh, row two, if you like. So what that gives us is minus four lots of everything in row one. So you minus four lots of one, then the second element is a one, the third element, three over two and like the augmented element is 13. So we're going to work that out. Then we're going to add it to the existing row two. Then we're going to stick the answer in row two as the new row two. So let's work it out. So minus four lots of one so is now going to be minus four. Minus four times that one is also minus four minus four times three over two is minus 12 over two, which is actually minus six. And then minus four times 13, four thirds are like four tens and four threes, which is 52. So it's gonna be minus 52. And we're gonna add that to what row two already is, which is four, minus one, two, and 11. And then we're gonna stick it in row two as the new row two. So with matrices, you have to add them element by element, of course. So minus four plus four is zero. Minus four plus minus one is minus four minus one, which is minus five. Minus 12 over two is just minus six. So minus six plus two becomes less negative. So minus six plus two is minus four. And then we've got minus 52 plus 11. Well, 52 take away 11 is 41. Minus 52 plus 11 is minus 41. And that goes into R2 as the new row two. So the new row two is gonna be zero, minus five, minus four, and minus 41. So we're getting there now. But remember, because we need only one non-zero number here as the multiplier for variable Z, remember this is the multiplier for X, this column's the multiplier for y, and this column is the multiplier for z because of the way that matrices multiply. We want only one non-zero number here. Uh, these two need to be zeros, otherwise we can't figure out what x and y are. So this is the new row one, the new row two, and we want a new row three that starts with zero. That's the first thing we need to worry about, is getting it to start with zero. 
at the moment, row three starts with three. We need to ask ourselves, what can we multiply another row by and then add it or subtract it from row three to get row three starting with a zero? And because we've made this one, this row start with one, that was the good practice, it's going to be a bit easier to figure out. So we know that three, take away three, is zero. So somehow we need to get minus three added to this. But because this row starts with one, we could just multiply row one by minus three and add it to row three because that would be minus three times one gives us minus three and if we add it to three that would make the new row three zero. So we're going to take minus three lots of row one and we're going to add it to the existing row three and then we're going to stick the answer to become the new row three. So that gives us minus three lots of whatever is currently in row one, which is one, one, three over two. You can do these dots if you want to, and 13. So that's minus three lots of row one, like it says. We're gonna add it to row three as it is currently which is row three is here three three one twenty five so that's adding it to row three we're going to stick the answer in row three we're going to overwrite it make it the new row three so it's getting you know it's not too difficult once you know what you're doing minus three times this we do scalar multipliers by each individual element and for all of them. So it'd be minus three times one is minus three. Minus three times the next one is minus three. Minus three times three over two is minus nine over two. Minus three thirteens, or three thirteens are 39, so it's minus 39. That's still a, a row matrix, so it's still a matrix. Um, and we add it to what it already was 3, 3, 1, 25 you can put these down if you want to but it doesn't really make any difference so we're going to add those together and make it the new row 3 but when you add matrices you have to do them element by element so we have minus 3 plus 3 the new row three then is going to start with minus three plus three is zero. Then the next two elements, minus three plus that three is also zero. Now we need to add minus nine over two. We need to add it to one. But if I write here, one is actually equal to two halves. So this is actually two over two, that one there. So we could say minus nine over two added to two over two, or minus nine plus two is minus seven. So it's gonna be minus seven over two. And then we need to add minus 39 plus 25, or 39 take away 25 is 14. So minus 39 plus 25 is minus 14 we said we're going to put that as a new row three. So let's do it. Zero, zero, minus seven over two, which is minus three and a half, and minus 14. So what we've now got is what we wanted. We've got just one number here, and then two numbers here that aren't zero, and three numbers here, and the first row starts with one. And remember, this was the x, y, z coefficient. This was the x, y, z coefficient for the second equation, where it equaled minus 41. And these are the x, y, z coefficients where the answer equaled minus 14. So all we need to do is split the matrix back up again 
Uh, so what it really is, so it looks more like equations again, we've got 1, 1, 3 over 2, 0, minus 5, minus 4, 0, 0, minus 7 over 2. So that was our matrix of coefficients, the things we multiply. multiplied by the unknowns equals a column matrix with elements 30, minus 41 and minus 14. So that's everything we need to work out z then y then x uh, and i said it didn't matter which order the rows are because when you think about it you could have had your row starting with two zeros here then with one zero and no zeros here because it doesn't matter but it's just convention to have the zeros in the bottom left i suppose it's just a standard way of doing it so what we're going to do is multiply to solve for z because what we've got is not lots of x plus not lots of y plus minus 7 over 2 lots of z equals minus 14. But there's no point writing down 0 times something. I only did it to show the way we multiply matrices is row by column. So 0x, 0y, minus 7 over 2 z equals 14 so they're redundant zero times something doesn't matter so that gives us minus 7 over 2 lots of z equals minus 14 so what we could do is multiply both sides or divide both sides by minus 1 if you don't like minus signs because they're both negative so that's like saying 7 over 2 lots of z is 14 or you could write that as 7z over 2 it's all the same thing is 14 so therefore z equals 14 times 2 over 7 14 times 2 is 28 28 divided by 7 is 4. So z equals 4. So, so far we've actually solved for z. So we can write it up here if you want. z equals 4. So we know one of the unknowns now, and we need to remember this because we're going to use it to solve y. Now, if we take the second row, it'd be naught lots of x, so I'm not going to write it down. Minus 5 lots of y minus 4 lots of z equals minus 41 and that's the same as saying minus 5y remember z is equal to 4 so minus 4 lots of z is minus 4 lots of 4 is minus 16 equals minus 41 you could multiply or divide both sides by minus 1 which gives us 5y it would give us 5y plus 16 is 41 but to shorten the steps 5y plus 16 is 41 we say 5y is plus 41 minus 16 if we take it to the other side you change the sign 41 take away 16 would be 31 take away 5 is 25 so that's 5 lots of y is 25 therefore y is 25 divided by 5 which equals 5 so now we've got the next variable 
solved if you like you've got y equals fine we make a note of that because we're going to use it to solve for x so now multiplying this matrix 1x plus 1y plus 3 over 2z is equal to 13 so instead of writing 1x we'll just write x because it's the same thing x plus 1y so that's x plus y plus 3 halves or 3 over 2 lots of z equals 13 but remember y is equal to 5 z is equal to 4 so what that gives us x is the only one we don't know x plus 5 plus 3 lots of 4 over 2 or 3 halves of 4 which is 3 lots of z equals 13 but remember 3 lots of 4 over 2 is 12 over 2 is 6 or 3 over 2 is 1 and a half times 4 is still 6 so x plus 5 plus 6 is 13 so I'll write it there x plus 5 plus 6 equals 13 therefore x equals if you take the numbers to the other side you change this sign you got 13 minus 5 minus 6 which is 13 minus 11 x is 2 so x is 2 so we've finally solved all of our equations we found the solutions to the three simultaneous equations and then we found that z is 4 y is 5 and x is 2 so we plug them back into the original equations to see if they work take in equation 1 2x plus 2y plus 3z is 26 so x is 2 y is 5 and z is 4 so that's 2 times 2 added to 2 times 5 for 2 lots of y added to 3 lots of z which is 3 lots of 4 that equals 4 plus 10 is 14 plus 12 equals 26 so it does it you can say 4 and 10 is 14 plus 12 is 26 or 12 and 10 is 22 plus 4 is 26 so yeah that works so we must have the right numbers here I suppose we could do the next two if you like 4x is 4 times 2 minus y is minus 5 plus 2 lots of z is plus 2 lots of 4 that gives us 8 take away 5 plus 8 gives us 16 take away 5 is 11 and it said it was meant to be 11 so that works as well you may as well do the last one 3 lots of x is 3 lots of 2 added to 3y is 3 lots of 5 plus 1 lot of z equals 25 is that right though we've got 6 plus 15 is 21 plus 4 is 25 good or you could have said 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 15 is 25 so all of these are definitely correct just a quick reminder of the steps that we took we wanted to make sure just out of convention really that the first row after we had done row operations on it started with one it makes all the working out afterwards easier and what we then wanted was only two numbers on this part of the coefficient matrix two numbers that aren't zero and the other one make it zero and here we want just one number that isn't zero and make the others zero because this way we can find one lot of z then we can use y and z then we can use x y and z okay so if you've got any questions please comment um, it looks a lot harder than it is and try some yourselves all right thanks a lot cheers